This is an ordinary mechanical pencil. And this is a homemade light bulb. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. In this week's video, in addition to learning how to make a homemade light bulb, we'll also be discussing topics like voltage, current, and resistance, and how a German physicist named George Ohm tied them all together. But first, let's make a homemade light bulb. What's nice about this experiment is you probably have most of the things you need already around the house. You'll need a glass jar, two of different sizes would be ideal. We used a couple of beakers because we bought a set off Amazon a couple of months ago for the occasional science experiment. But you can use anything like a shot glass and a sauce bottle and that'll work just fine. What's a shot glass? Can I have one? The first thing you're going to want to do is to get your batteries ready. We bought a pack of D-cell batteries and using electrical tape connected them together like so. Once you're done with your long battery pack, it should look something like this. And speaking of batteries, we'd like to thank our sponsor for this week's video, Energizer Battery. You can trust Energizer uh, Battery. Uh, Daddy? Yeah? I forgot to tell you that they refused the sponsorship deal. What do you mean they refused the sponsorship deal? They said we didn't have enough subscribers. Any battery will do. Now the next thing you're going to need is a pair of alligator clips. And these are actually a little bit more difficult to find. I first went to Home Depot and I struck out. Luckily, there's a Lowe's right across the street. But unfortunately, they didn't have it either. And after some thought and a little bit of luck, our local auto parts store came to the rescue. In the bulbs and fuses aisle, you'll find the test lead wires, which are exactly what you need for this experiment. Now that you have your long battery and your test lead wires, it's time to start making your light bulb. Take your test lead wires, and they generally come in packs of two. Take one and tape it on one side of the jar, and your other test lead and tape it on the other side of the jar, both with the lead alligator clips pointing up. And in the end, it should look something like this. Now comes the tricky part, securing the pencil lead in the alligator clips without breaking it. And of course, pencil lead is not actually lead these days, it's made of graphite. But for the sake of this video, we're going to keep calling it lead. The fact that it is graphite though, is what makes the experiment work. Graphite, a form of carbon, is actually a good conductor of electricity and provides enough resistance to create the white light for our light bulb. Also, the second larger jar goes on top of your light bulb to contain any fumes that may develop. You'll see in a minute why that's important. And this is where you can have some variability in the experiment. We started off by using eight D-cell batteries taped together and 0.5 millimeter lead for our first experiment. But you can use a different size pencil lead or a different number of batteries to see how it affects your light bulb. Now once you're all set up, take one end of the alligator clip lead and touch your negative terminal. Take your other alligator clip lead and touch your positive terminal to complete the circuit. This is our first experiment and it's going in real time. And as you can see at the point right here, it explodes. As I mentioned earlier, this is why it's a good idea to have a larger jar covering your homemade light bulb. So the lesson here, maybe start with seven AA batteries. So we removed one battery from our battery train down to seven and things worked perfectly. Now yeah, we're getting somewhere. A homemade light bulb. Also, be careful handling the clip leads during the experiment because they can get pretty hot. This is a closer view of the whole process sped up in time of the pencil lead. You can see it gets brighter and brighter until ultimately it burns up and just breaks in half. With this view at a different angle, you can actually see the individual lead fibers breaking apart until the whole thing snaps in half. But it will get pretty bright before that happens. And that is how you make a homemade light bulb. And the science behind our homemade light bulb, as you can see, is not that different from a light bulb you'll buy in a store. 
Zooming in, it was interesting to see that the tungsten filament used in everyday light bulbs is actually very finely coiled. And now let's talk some homeschool science. A good objective for a lesson like this in any homeschooling environment are to cover topics like voltage, current, and resistance, and how a German physicist named George Ohm came up with an equation that tied them all together. Electric current is basically defined by the number of charged particles that are moving through a space, or in this case, a wire. The more electrons you have flowing through a wire, the higher your current is going to be. And the definition of resistance is just the measure of forces that are slowing that current down. The higher the resistance, the harder it is for the current to go forward. Think of current and resistance like cars going down the road. The cars represent current and stoplights represent resistance. The more stoplights you have, the harder it is to move freely down the street. But on a highway with no stoplights, the current represented by the cars is moving just fine. And our third term is voltage. At its most basic definition, it's just the amount of pressure or force it takes to push the current down the wire. So let's take a second and discuss what George Ohm discovered. He was the first to come up with the equation V equals I times R. In his equation, V stands for voltage and R stands for resistance. And that leads to letter I, which stands for current. Why did they choose I instead of C to represent current? A few years before George Ohm did his work, a French scientist named André Marie Ampère, my French is terrible, initially called what we call today current, the intensity current. And that's where we get the I from. So again, we have voltage equals current times resistance, a super famous physics equation, and of course it's called Ohm's Law. So as you can see from his equation, the higher the current and the higher the resistance, the more voltage that circuit is going to have. Conversely, the lower the current and the lower the resistance, the less voltage it will have. It's why you never want to touch a power line, because there's definitely a lot of current going down these things, which means, according to Ohm's Law, a lot of voltage as well. This is an excellent physics lesson, and it involves a simple multiplication. So if you did this lesson, you can have physics and your mathematics covered, and you can really do it in about 30 minutes. If you're not super interested in doing an experiment like this, but want to cover the topics, you should check out our video we did on snap circuits. It's an all-in-one kit that covers the topics, has many lessons in it, and the kids really had a great time doing it. You can check the link in the description down below. But if you do go look at that video, keep in mind it was one of our first videos, so the quality of it wasn't that great. What do you mean they haven't gotten any better? Well, that's it for this week's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun making a homemade light bulb and learning a little physics. Have a great day, everybody. See you next week. Also, a quick reminder as I edit the video, we encourage you to go to our website, homeschoolscienceclub.com. There you'll find the worksheet that you can give your kids to do as an assessment after watching the video. You'll also see all the other worksheets that we have that are completely free. If you're new to our channel, it's just something we do to help encourage science education in the homeschool elementary environment. We try to do a video every week. This week's video was a little bit late because the pollen is really messing with my voice this year. Do you know how hard it is to make a video when you don't have a voice? But with that being said, we hope you enjoy our videos. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week.